Yeah, it's your boy Buck 50, fucking with DME TV. Way too much flex, flex, not enough hustle. Things are working out, yeah. I got it off the muscle. Yeah. Just a year ago, I was knee deep in the struggle. Yeah. But now they looking cause they never know. I'm 50, what's poppin' bruh? What's good, what's good? Nah man, just cooling out. Come check you out, see what you got going on. So um, for the people man don't, don't know you, tell them who you are man, where you from? Alright, yeah, I'm both 50. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. But I rose with born and raised Henley. You feel me? Snakes and Gators. It's a clothing line that represents my music. I'm both fit the artist not connected to any label. The Snakes and Gators is just a brand that that I had and I use it to promote my music. Okay. So kinda of tell us how Snakes and Gators got started, man. How you came up with the name? Uh when I came up with Snakes and Gators, uh it was about 2014, I believe. Uh we was going to a lot of events. You know, represent other artists. I had did music. One of my other partners, Below the Trapper, he's doing music. My little brother do music, and just different people we used to network and be around. You know, and we were like, man, even though we separate energies, we need, I wanted to make something that represented us. You know, when we went out and we stepped, and it wasn't just music. So it wasn't that many clothing lines out. You know, I saw a lot of ENTs doing their shirts down. Like, Shit, I just have a clothing line. So I came up with, I came up with the name of like, of just riding, me and my lady was riding, and I was thinking of something that would be fitting and something that meant something. So I thought of snakes and gators, you know, and thought of a metaphor, you know, because snakes are crossing, you know what I'm saying? You never know what a snake, it might be friendly, but you never know what it's gonna do in the end. A gator, you're gonna respect what it is, because you already know what he kind of do, he buy business. But he, most of the time, a gator chilling. You feel me, when he bother you, you don't fuck with them. So, you know what I'm saying, came up with Snakes and Gators Company, you feel me, the clothing company. I started making t-shirts. I did, I sold shirts for about five, six months. And then it kind of died off a little bit because, you know, the team kind of separated. Okay. So I know you rep Henley Homes. I'm not from Columbia, so you could kind of explain that, man, the area of Henley Homes and how I was growing up Henley Homes, man. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I was born and raised in Henley from 84 to 2000. You feel me? Right out Rosewood. It's crazy out there, you know what I'm saying? Raised around drug dealers, crackheads. Niggas that rob people, you know what I'm saying? There's good people out there too, you feel me? I was involved with a lot of after school programs, things in the neighborhood, and I used to be around people that did what they shouldn't do sometimes, and at an early age, you know, my family was in to a lot of the streets, so I kind of raised around it, so, and if you in that vibe, you kind of succumb to it, but I didn't put fall full into it, but that was here and there, you feel me? Word, right, that's what's up, man. So you've been grinding, man, and shit, dropping mixtape. How many mixtape you dropped in the last, uh, let's say, year? Uh, in fact, I dropped from October, from about August, October, September to about February. I dropped about four mixtapes in like six months. And I got on my fucking grind, the hustle tape. That's my first one I dropped on the Snakes and Gators. And I got respect the hustle on my fucking grind too. And I got on my fucking grind three, the pressure tape. Then I got the book help me tape that I dropped on Valentine's Day. I just dropped recently. You know what I'm saying? It's all on that pill. And I also had one of my older mixtapes, White House and Gold Rappers, that had been on that 2013. So, you feel me? throwback right there, bro. And right. last year, yeah, I just dropped four. Where? Yeah. So, so what's next for Buck 50, man, as far as music wise? Uh, right now, I'm um, working on a single produced by my dog, DZ. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Called Jump On It. Jump on the D, uh, jump on the D. We trying to come up with a name, with yeah. It, you know what I'm saying, but it's it's for the club, and I'm working on some other songs to follow it as well, and building my brand and merchandise for the Snakes and Gators Company. Okay, so you're gonna drop a you're gonna drop an album, or are you gonna just you know an EP, or are you gonna just drop I'm, some singles? I'm gonna drop some singles at first, okay. and then prepare myself to drop an album. Just trying to build momentum up for that, you know, try to broaden my fan base, try to get my sound, and my brand out there first. Definitely. Definitely. So, um, how do you feel about the Columbia music scene uh, in, in general? How do you feel about the Columbia music scene? And also, how do you feel about the music scene in the Carolinas? Uh, Columbia music scene, it's a, it's a lot of positivity in it. It's, it's unity in some places, and then there's a lot of negativity in the city as well. You feel me? You know, the main thing is that most people should focus on this. If you win the business, it's this business first. It's not about 
anything. You know, there is a show of favoritism when it comes to certain things, but it also is business relationship. It's not always just favoritism because some people are constant around each other as far as business wise that we don't see. And that's what it may seem as far as some form of favoritism. But if you on your grind, you do your thing, and you learn in the business, some people ain't learning the business, you feel me? They just round people, you feel me? So Right. T- tell me what you mean by that not learning the business. Like getting your music copyrighted and coded the proper way. Making sure you go check get your shit registered for sound scan and things like that. Uh making sure you, you would be a mind. Making sure you're networking and going out to the, these DJ pools and these things to get your name spread. Making sure you, you got your, your uh, social media together to where they can link and they can find you. Your YouTube channel and all that. Understanding, you know, the rules of the game, you feel me? Because it's, it's not always wins and, none, and no game, you feel me? You got to lose in order to win, you feel me? Okay. I know recently, like, we had the SC Top 20 list that came out. Can you tell me how you felt about that list? Because everybody didn't like the list. Some people had a problem with the list. Some people took it as motivation. But tell, tell us how Buck 50 feels. Well, when I saw the list, I mean, like, naturally as an artist, you know what I mean? I already knew, but I just really saw the uproar first. You know, then I went and checked it out. You feel me? And... Just what I learned in the last couple of years is people are under certain people's radars. If you ain't moving and they're not seeing you, then they're not going to put you in a certain position, a certain category. Because if you're just promoting in your neighborhood and at your house and these people are out of town and all these places and they doing business, these people doing, I, I researched and I Google, I'm a, I knew the majority of the list, some of them as far as the 803 people. You feel me? And I saw what they did, and I know why some over several of them over the years. You feel me? They, they deserve to be there. You feel me? And just like they said on top of SC page, if you if I'm if you're not under my radar, how can I see you? Some people got their pages private, basically because y'all don't want your lady seeing what you're doing or your man seeing what you're doing. You gotta put yourself in the public eye to be seen, cause this is business, like. Is people get nominated for awards and they lose, but then it's going to stop them from what they're doing now. You got to go harder. And at the same time, it's, it's in a local market. They're trying to build something so we can be noticed. This is something that we've been asking for for years. Somebody finally created it. Why be pessimistic about it? Figure out what the criteria is and step your game up. Move in motion. I ain't cried at all. I've said in the crib, planning every day. I, don't, I lose sleep on my lady tell you. That's all I do. Word. That's what's up, man. Yeah, that list, man, I, I kind of felt like in the beginning, I was like, it wasn't needed, but then, like you like you said, you researched it. I researched it, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know another list came out. Somebody came out with a list that by, had, uh, by, area yeah, code. by area code. And that thing, that was dope. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I had an interview uh, recently, and mm-hmm. we, we talked about that topic, and it was like, you know, they researched it, I researched it, and I know right. you said you researched it. Why are these other artists not researching it? You upset because you're not on the list or you don't know these people on the list? Like how you don't know these people right. that you've been rapping 10 years and right. I know I know more majority of the people right. came from different area right. codes and I'm not a rapper. You it's know what I'm It's because they don't research. They only care about themselves and who their favorites are, who they right. think should blow. You feel me? Who they watching? They don't know it's this entire state. We can't just watch what's going on in your city. It's, it's, as far as we're trying to create a Carolina culture. Exactly. Man, and I loved it. I liked it when they made it the one to let you know based by area code. Cause once again, it's now giving an eye on who who to watch and artists in our state when you didn't even know who when you when you asked a who a black Zach was or who a so and so was and every people on them that's online really didn't know. Now they know. You feel me? A lot of people already knew who some people was, but now they know even further, like, oh man. Yeah, so bro got to be grinding, man. He on the top. Let me check him out. You feel me? Shout out she on there. Oh, let me check her out. That's what it should have been. You feel me? And that's what they doing. They showing y'all who we got now. If you got features with them, you working at your home, boy, promote your people. You feel me? Promote them. You feel me? Work with them. So if they, they watching them, guess what? If you work with them, they're going to see you too. Yo, you got a possibility of getting put on the prize page. But we need to be trying to move further than him. They trying to make sure we get seen. So when the people come here looking for us, they know who to look for. You feel right. me? Right. Imagine coming to a town and you come and try to get artists 
but you don't know who to look for because they ain't telling you who the artist is. Nobody promote you. Remember, the last couple years, everybody saying nobody support artists, nobody care about artists. Everybody creating a culture now to follow somebody, to follow us, what we do. Respect that. Right. So you think that that was just basically one of the main missing pieces, like yeah. culture, you know what I'm saying? Having yeah. people out here really grinding, putting right. on, and putting out content out right. there. Right, it's a stat sheet. Yeah. Just like you, you watch ESPN. Yeah. It's a stat sheet. Yeah. All the teams on the league don't make it over ESPN, cuz. Exactly. But you see them at the beginning of the season to see who they're gonna play against. You feel me? Exactly. That's yeah. something matter. You feel me? Hell yeah, man. So what you got going on, man, for like anything out of state? Uh I got a little obstacle, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna look cool obstacle the way it is. Okay. I'm in a face, you feel me? I'm in a face. Uh, I got to catch a cab, Uber, whatever, boat, surfboard, jump out the plane, parachute. Be to try and pull up word. Cause it's more than here, y'all. Word. That's the goal. Start here and move further. They looking for us. They looking at us. But they want to see us come in their neighborhood and show them what we can do in their neighborhood. Don't just do it in your neighborhood. Take out of time. Word. So man, for people that want to get in contact with you for features, you know, maybe sit down, get in the studio, collab with you, because I know you down to collab, you know what I'm yeah, saying? So and, and get in the studio and grind it out. So I ain't got to worry about that. Anybody right. that's seeing this video, y'all need to go ahead and hit them up. So drop your social media, man. Tell them where they can find your work at. All right, on Twitter, Instagram, and Gmail is B U C K the number five I F T Y eight oh three. It's book fifty eight oh three. That's how you find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Gmail. And that's my Snapchat. I barely be on there. I'm trying to get right with the Snapchat. On Facebook, is James Epps. Or you can find me, my artist page, Buck50, B-U-C-K, the number five by F-T-Y. I also have a Snakes and Gators page. Snakes and Gators all together. The last S is a dollar sign. Snakes, the and sign, Gators, dollar sign. That's how you find me on Facebook. Instagram book fifty eight oh three, Twitter book fifty eight oh three. I'm on Twitter and Instagram a lot. I'm on Facebook. Hey, there, everybody know that. You inbox me, hit me up. I'll be ready to work whenever you're ready to work. Let's let's do this. Buck man, appreciate you, man, for linking up with DME TV for this interview, man. Appreciate your time, bro. All right. All right. Peace. Never know what's in the duffel. Way too much flex, not enough hustle. Things are working out. I got it off the muscle. Just a year ago, I was knee deep in the struggle. But now they looking, cause they never know what's in the duffel.